One simple tip that helped me improve my yo-yo release was imagining my forearm facing the pins as I was nearing the point of release. As a beginner, it's common to think that the wrist exclusively does everything without paying attention to the other details that occur during the release. By using the forearm with the wrist, it provides more stability, gives you a bigger visual cue to focus on, and it helps offload all that stress of the bowling ball on your wrist. In terms of size, in comparison to just your wrist alone, your forearm is bigger, stronger, and can tolerate more weight. For example, I've got this 35 pound dumbbell here in my hand, and this is just to illustrate what I'm trying to say. It would be pretty tough for me to lift that weight with only my wrist. It would be more efficient to use my forearm to help move that weight. So when you are trying to throw a bowling ball and stay behind it, that forearm should be ready to activate and stay active. As long as you keep that forearm facing the pins, then you will be behind the bowling ball. As I get into my one step drill, you see how my forearm is facing the pins. You can see the bowling ball roll off my fingers. And as long as you have that forearm facing the pins for as long as you can, then you are going to be behind the bowling ball. However, the moment that forearm turns too early, then your hand and fingers end up on the side of the bowling ball. Okay, check this out. I have this random sponge I put on my forearm. If that sponge faces the pins, that puts you in a position that puts your hand underneath and behind the bowling ball. However, the moment SpongeBob faces to the side, my hand is no longer behind the bowling ball, and now my hand is to the side of the bowling ball. As I walk up to the foul line to do the one-step drill, in my head, before I get into the push away, I want to already think about pre-activating that forearm. Once I get into that push away, I should feel some sort of activation going on. When you start to get a feel for it, you can try different levels of forearm activation or lower or higher levels of emphasis in your head. For example, you could do a level one where you're thinking about it, then a level two where you're thinking about it a little bit more, then a level three where you're really thinking about it. That's what bowling is all about. Experimentation. Your mind has to process all this new data, all these different events, and figure out what to do with that information. It's important that you evaluate how you threw the last ball. Was it good? Was it bad? What were you thinking exactly in your head before you threw the ball? The list goes on. To kind of reiterate everything, using the forearm as a visual cue and putting more activation in it can help you improve your release and stay behind the bowling ball. Your forearm is a lot stronger than just your wrist alone. Your wrist needs your forearm and your forearm needs your wrist. I mean, they are connected to one another. This is something to think about and this was something I started to implement into my game during my one-handed journey. Ever since I started to do it, it's really helped me stay behind the bowling ball more and get the bowling ball to roll off my fingers properly. So, one more time. By keeping your forearm facing the pins as long as you can, 
near the point of release, that will put your hand in a position where you are behind the bowling ball and allow you to get underneath it. But the moment that forearm faces to the side, your hand is no longer in a position to be behind the bowling ball. And now your hand and fingers will end up on the side. Give it a try. It might feel weird at first, but give it some time. Keep working on your release because I'm always working on mine. Until the next one, peace.